Hello pretty people. Kawa Japa no Kyodori des. I am Kyodori from Kawa Japa. Today I am going to introduce you to a Japanese character that you have never seen before and you may never see again. That is because this character is usually invisible. Now I have not forgotten our subject. We were talking, weren't we, about how the Ga particle is the center, the fulcrum, the vital point of every Japanese sentence, even when there appears to be no Ga in the sentence. In order to explain that rather mysterious sounding fact, I have to introduce you to this character, this invisible character. Here it is. This is the symbol for the Japanese zero pronoun. Actually, I thought I had invented the use of this symbol in my book Unlocking Japanese. But later, researching the subject further, I found that some academic researchers also use this same symbol for the zero pronoun. You probably have not heard about the zero pronoun because it is not taught in ordinary textbooks and schools. But if you google Japanese zero pronoun you will find a lot of material about it. All of it tucked away in academic papers and PhD theses. This is very unfortunate because you really need to know this in order to understand Japanese. It can indeed become very complicated but the fundamental fact of the zero pronoun is not complicated at all and I am going to explain it now. Let us begin with an English sentence. Listen to this. Mary got out of Mary's car went into Mary's house and proceeded up the stairs. When Mary got to Mary's room, Mary opened the door and saw that Mary's things were scattered all over the floor. Is that a grammatical English sentence? Yes, it is. Is it a natural English sentence? No, it is not. Because after we have established who Mary is, when we use her name the first time, after that we keep saying she and her. We don't keep saying Mary, do we? It's the same with objects as well as people. Take this sentence. Pick up the barbell from the floor and hold the barbell in your hand as long as you can. When the barbell becomes too heavy, replace the barbell on the floor. Now. That is a grammatical English sentence, but in normal, natural English, we only say barbell once to establish what the subject is. After that, we say it. In Japanese, we don't say either. In Japanese, we use the zero pronoun, which you can't see and you can't hear. Some people think the zero pronoun is ambiguous. But actually, it is no more ambiguous than the English it. It can mean the Andromeda galaxy, or a grain of sand, or a flower, or the sky, or your ear. It can mean just about anything. It only means anything in relation to its context. And the same is true of the zero pronoun. We can only understand it in relation to its context. So you can see that it is just as ambiguous as the zero pronoun. It just wastes more ink because why do we need to keep saying it and she and her over and over again? We don't. In Japanese we don't do that. We use the zero pronoun. So. Why am I even talking about a zero pronoun? Does it matter whether we call it a zero pronoun or whether we call it just nothing? Yes, 
it does matter very much unless we understand that the zero pronoun is always there we will find it very hard to grasp Japanese. In order to understand why this is, we need to remember a couple of things about particles and nouns and pronouns. The basic one character particles, ga, o, and ni, all go at the end of nouns. And we need to think of them as inseparably attached to their nouns. The noun and the particle make up a single unit and that tells us exactly where the noun stands in the sentence, what its relation is to the other parts of the sentence. And we must also remember that every noun and every pronoun has a particle. In casual speech some of the particles may be dropped some of the time. In formal speech, there are a few cases in which a particle can be dropped, but every noun and every pronoun logically has a particle. Now, here is the important thing. This applies to the zero pronoun just as much as to any other pronoun. The zero pronoun always has a particle. But because the zero pronoun is invisible, its particle is also invisible. That is why sentences that do not appear to have a ga in them, in fact, always do have a ga in them. Every time we see a sentence with no ga, we can be sure that the zero pronoun is somewhere in that sentence and has the ga. Now, to see how this works, let's take an example of a very simple English sentence, got milk. You can see that this English sentence is using a zero pronoun. The zero pronoun here is you. Got milk means have you got milk. If we say the same thing in Japanese, milku o motte ka, we also have the zero pronoun. And the zero pronoun in this case stands for anata you. The difference is that got milk in English is not correct grammar. You know what it means, but it's not correct grammar. Miruku omotte ka is correct grammar in Japanese. It's using the, the zero pronoun, which is a legitimate part of Japanese. And the zero pronoun, the invisible pronoun, as always, has an invisible particle attached to it. And the particle here is ga. It doesn't have to be ga. In some sentences, the zero pronoun may have a different particle attached to it. For example, if you say, Dari ga keiki wo tabeta, who ate the cake? And I reply, Watashi ga tabeta, what I am saying is, I ate it. It in Japanese is the zero pronoun. And so what I'm saying is watashi ga keiki o tabeta. So you see here the it, the zero pronoun, takes the wo particle, not the ga particle. These sentences are really quite simple, but in more complex sentences we need to be aware of what the zero pronoun is representing and what particle it takes, in other words, what role it plays in the sentence. It can become more complicated, especially where wa is involved. I said last time that I would be talking about wa this time, and then I realized that I have to explain all this before we can get on to the question of wa. I will try to do the next lesson a little earlier so that you don't have to wait a whole week before we get to wa. Uh, taking this all step by step, I think it is quite easy to understand. But if there's anything you didn't understand, please ask me in the comments below. If you want to add anything, or if you want to raise questions about what I'm saying, please ask me in the comments below. I don't mind if you criticize me. I will reply to whatever 
you say. If you wish to understand this all much more clearly, may I take the liberty of recommending my book, Unlocking Japanese. It's available at Amazon in both paperback and Kindle editions. Thank you so much for attending this lesson. Kore kara, yoroshiku anagaishimasu. Class dismissed.